My name is Samuel Miller Hazelbart III, but my nicknames are Butch and Bart. That's what I've been called my whole life. And we're in my uh, folks' cabin in Grand Lake. Um, this house was uh, started to be built in either late 68 or sometime in 69. My folks bought the lot for like, I think it was 7,000 bucks or something. Um, and then built had the house built, or most of it. It was a company in Denver that brought it up in pieces. It's post and beam construction, so I guess that makes it easy to build it in pieces. And then we wired it and plumbed it ourselves and stuff. And I think I uh, got to move into it in about 1970. Uh, my mom was Pat and my dad was Sam Miller Hazelbart Jr. I have a sister Heidi and a brother Bill. And uh, we've been coming up here Let's see, probably to Grand Lake itself, probably for about five years before we built the cabin, because of a connection with Jim Munn, Dr. Jim Munn, a veterinarian, who was uh, our veterinarian when I was growing up in the Littleton Morrison area. Um, I don't remember a time of not knowing Jim Munn, but Dad was buddies with him, and Jim started sailing up here. He was very competitive. He used to race cars and sailboats and go in airplanes and gliders and all that stuff. So anyway, that's how I know Jim. My first job was with him when I was 12 years old in Littleton working at the vet clinic. So anyway, that's the connection to Grand Lake because he started racing sailboats up here, I think. I don't know why Jim started coming up here. Maybe through Don Beaglehole who had been up here for years and years and uh, Libby and Bill Saladay was their name. They were racers too. Um, so anyway, that's the connection to Grand Lake, and before that, as a little kid, we'd come up to Lake Granby and, and uh, go boating and, and Granby go fishing and stuff like that because of a man named Jack Champion, who never owned a, a place on Grand Lake, but he'd stay here all the time. In fact, there's a fish on the wall up there that he caught, and it's mounted up there. So anyway, my folks are gone. Then my dad died about three years ago, and mom died in 2002. And no one really used the cabin except for myself and my friend Carl. And uh, we actually live in California now, and it's the first time we've been back in several years. And met Steve last night, walking along or when he was walking the dog, and we were doing the I don't know. Every time we visit tour, driving around the lake or in a boat driving around the lake. So that was fun to meet Steve. And I knew Steve's younger brother as a teenager. Um, I had a loss for words. I used to come up here uh, all summer long. I've worked, had jobs up here. The probably the longest one was with Mac Rusk, who still is up here uh, part time. He's not going to be 93. And his son Chris, um, they were they were builders, and they also had a uh, ski do uh, store agency, and so we'd come up here and go snowmobiling in the winter and boating in the summer and hang out with the yacht club and all that kind of stuff. I don't, do you want to hear about the why sure. my dad quit going to the yacht club? Sure. Uh, my dad is a very independent, or he was a very independent soul, and. Um, I don't know if he was on the board or not, but anyway, they decided to make a rule that no one could join the yacht club unless they had land on the lake. And my dad just blew up at that, couldn't, st couldn't stand that idea of being that elite. So he quit the yacht club, and so that was the end of sailboat racing and having anything to do with the Commodore's Ball and all that stuff, which was fine. We still continued to come up here and have fun boating and bring friends up and stuff like that. But anyway, as my parents grew older, it was more difficult for them to come up, and they quit coming up. My mom actually uh, had a real tragedy around 1980, so I guess they'd had the house only 10 years or so about then. She got a sinus infection that no one diagnosed correctly, and it got into her brain, and so she was brain damaged the rest of her life. And she could come up, but uh, she was never quite the same person. I mean, you wouldn't know it talking to her. She was still still herself, she could talk to you and smoke and drink with the best of them, but she couldn't um, paint anymore or make curtains like she did for this place. Or She was quite artistic. She's a painter, threw pots, uh, made curtains, made clothes, all that kind of stuff. 
so anyway, that I think that kind of made it harder for her to come up, and Dad was very devoted to her, and so they gradually quit coming up less and less until the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, neither one of them came up at all. So Carl and I are the only ones who have been coming up here for the past mm -hmm. 10 to 15 years, I think. When you were up here as a teenager, what kinds of things did you do? Well, typical things like... Drinking, yeah, we went. Boone's Farm apple wine. I think that's what it was. Boone's, Boone's Farm, Farm apple. strawberry wine, or or strawberry like and apple wine. Yeah. yeah, and I'd hang out with um, Dave and Jeff Thomas, um, Tim Thompson, um, Kim Oglesby, who was uh, a daughter of the Snyders, who lived down on that end of the lake, and they owned the drugstore. Um, knew a little bit of your brother, yeah, the Baddies, yeah. And who else did we hang out with? Kurt Morrill. Uh, I don't know. That was pretty much the girl. Oh, Carla and, uh, and, and Derek Davis were a big part of my life. Even beyond Grand Lake, I remained friends with them for many years afterwards. And I think um, Barkley Davis still owns their family cabin. But um, I haven't seen Derek in years. And Carla, I've kind of lost touch with her. I saw her maybe... Ten years ago, she actually they actually lived in the same neighborhood as Carl and I did in Indian Hills, so we got together once or twice. And I talked to Dave Thomas about once a year. Hmm. Kind of lost touch with everybody. Did you sail when you were? Oh yeah, here? yeah. What kind of boat did it you? It was sail? an e scow, um, a twenty-eight foot you know racing sailboat. Mm -hmm. It was a wooden one, which is kind of unusual for these days. I think they're all fiberglass, but that was the Patricia G. And actually, the transom to that boat is, uh, it was cut off about, I don't know, a couple feet of it, and it's still in the Yacht Club. It had a red canvas deck and That's where Patricia G on the back. Yeah, it's still in the Yacht Club, as far as I know. I haven't been in there in, I don't know, 10 years, but I understand it's still there. And then we had a motorboat that kind of was famous up here called the Aphrodite. It was a 1958 Crosby fiberglass boat that even before we owned it, and we bought it in. I don't know, the mid-60s before Grand Lake and everything. But it had used to be parked up here somewhere on Grand Lake, I forget where. 19-foot-old, big old, thick fiberglass boat. And it was kind of fun. It had two 40-horsepower engines. But then sometime in, I think, 71, my dad inherited a 1000 bucks, and he put a big six-cylinder Mercury engine on the back of it. And it, it turned into a hot rod. It was the fastest outboard on the lake. In fact, I won some kind of cup. I forget the name of the cup. It was the Speedboat Cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had been around a long time because there's a, a mold of an outboard on it that's an old one, you know, where you put the rope around it and pulled it. Mm. But anyway, that was in probably 71 or 2 that it won the Speed Cup, which was just, you know, who would go the fastest. Oh, and Mom used to race El Toro sailboats. And there were a bunch of um, ladies who ran, uh, sailed the El Toros. No Bull, I think, was had something to do with that. Um, and Mom and Ginny Henry, I remember. Jane Lynch. Uh, that's all that I can remember right now who were the racers. But they had a good time doing that. And maybe Elsie Rusk. I don't know if Elsie raced in the sailboats or not. But that was Mac Rusk's wife. Who was your crew on the... Oh, on the, on the sailboat? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was all family. It was um, dad and mom, Pat on the jib, my mom, dad on the, as the captain, and then Heidi, Bill, and I, depending on who was around, would do the lee boards and the, uh, the stays on the back and wait, you know. And we had some, man, those were fast sailboats. You'd get it up on the plane and you'd actually stand on one of the lee boards, keeping it from tipping over. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and Jim Munn was a very good sailor. I remember sailing. With him one, once, I think somebody from National Geographic was up here, and the wind was just howling, and we got, and I helped him on that, that shoot or whatever, and I mean, I think they clocked us at 20-some miles an hour. I mean, it was humming. I have never gone that fast on a sailboat. It was very fun. Mm -hmm. um, Jim Munn was a big part of all that, you know. I knew, I've known him ever since I was a little kid, and his first family before Grand Lake, he was... He was a famous guy, quite the, quite the gad about town. And like I said, he raced cars and raised dogs and showed dogs, which my dad did. He didn't race cars, but my dad ended up buying a Shelby Mustang because 
of hot rods, and in fact, I still own that car. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, and Jim had M an MGA, and then finally an AC Bristol, which was uh, before an AC Cobra, which is now mm -hmm. the you know the ultimate collector hot rod as an AC mm -hmm. Cobra that Sh Carol Shelby made. Okay. That's, in fact, uh, not too far from the DLSEs. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I'm just going back to that as, uh, as a teenager hanging out up here. I forgot to mention one of my best friends, who still is one of my best friends. I don't see him very often, but that's Steve Robertson, who is one of the, the peaks down on the uh, east end of the lake. And they have a giant old family cabin there that I was always fascinated with. Ten bedrooms, ten bathrooms, maids' quarters. They had beautiful Chris Crafts. But anyway, um, Steve would hang out with uh, Tim Thompson, uh, Janet White, Mary Ann White, Carla Davis. So anyway, we'd all drink, go, go out and get wine. I don't even remember how we'd get it, but got cheap wine, and we'd go up to the dump, I think, that, which was um, not even there now, and probably drink way too much and smoke. Oh, and then we'd go and hang out in the graveyard. In fact, I still have a gravestone that somebody made as a prank that shows my birth date and when I died on August 7th, 1971. And then somebody took me up there after we'd been drinking and said, Butch, Butch, look at here. There's a new grave. And we went over and looked at it, and it was me. And they just thought it was hilarious that, it was, <laughs> that they would bury me up there. Now, do you have the stone here? It's just a wooden one. Yeah, yeah I still have it. Well, yeah. I got a picture of it. Yeah, it's still. In fact, we just took it down because the house is being shown by mm -hmm. real estate agents. And it's probably a little morbid to have a little wooden grave or wooden grave thing marker. But um, yeah, and I don't know. I, with this drinking thing, it was just part of the culture up here. My parents were big drinkers, and uh, they'd let us kids. Maybe they were providing it. I don't remember, but. Well, I, I mean, I started smoking in front of my parents when I was like 13 or 14, because they were smoking. I guess it was cool. It was okay then. Now I can't imagine that. It's, I think it's a disgusting habit. So thank God. Yeah. Uh, but made lots of great friends and had a lot of fun. Water skiing at 10 o'clock to midnight in the dark. I mean, how how dangerous and foolish is that? Or going 40 miles an hour in a boat. <laughs> in a dark night, never knowing what you'd would hit. But anyway, we got away with it and never really got in trouble. Or oh, I remember one thing we did get in trouble for was the, the tour boats, when they were driving, they had big old Chris Crafts that would hold 20 people, and they'd be waving at us water skiing, and we'd ski by and spray them. And uh, it didn't go over very well, I think, several times. And finally, we got warned that we would get in really big trouble if we ever did it again. Was that when the Coxes owned the... Oh, this was before Four that. Cut. Before that, yeah. Who owned the boat service? They had a house on the lake, too. Mm -hmm. I can't think of their name. And it escapes me right now, there, too. We had it for quite a few years. Yeah. He was kind of a grumpy old guy, as I remember, too. But anyway, I love the Chris Crafts that were up here. I mean, to this day, I love wooden mahogany Chris Crafts. Mm -hmm. They're, I've never had one, but I just mm -hmm. drool over them and I can wake up and hear their sound of that. Usually they're six cylinders and probably from the 40s through the 50s. In the 50s and 60s they started putting V8s in them, Chevy V8s. Still love those. Still see them out here once They have time. a certain sound, don't they? They you do. Know it, it's yeah. unique. And in fact, one of your neighbors, um, Steve's neighbors, um, he had an avocado for him in California. Oh, man. Avocado farm, I don't yeah. Know. Oh, I, I was thinking of them last night. Their house is right over there, and he had a collection of four or five Chris Craft centuries. Jones? Jones. Frank and Laurel Jones. Yeah, he had a bunch of old wooden boats mm. that were just gorgeous that he'd take out once in a while. And then Steve Robertson, his family had two Chris Crafts, and one of them was one that his grandpa bought in 1929. And it was, uh, it was a long one. It had the front seat, back seat, and then an engine cover, and then a third back seat. It was probably 30, 30 feet long or something. Gorgeous boat. And um, Steve was the only one who took care of him, and he took it into the boat service 
somewhere to be refinished and it burnt down while the boat was in there and it was insured for like a thousand bucks. All that was left was the brass bell. And I think still Steve still has that, but I always remember that was the most gorgeous boat there ever was. Flat windshield, mm -hmm. triple cockpit. Yeah. And they still have their 1956 or 7 Chris Craft. In fact, I think somebody was going to refinish it this year, which is 2013. Um, I guess that's it. Okay.